Good morning everyone and welcome to a video that's going to make a lot of people in Stuttgart very upset because I'm going to be replacing a lot of their careful engineering with this 30 cent part from a Chevy Blazer. Let's get into it. But before we get into it, we need to talk a bit about, not our sponsor, because I, I don't have one, but what a PCV system is and how it differs from what the BMW has, which is, which, which is a CCV system. I don't actually know what CCV stands for, but in a PCV system, well, first off, in an engine, you have oil in the engine, in the crankcase, but also there's air, and there's oil whipping around, getting into thinning. You've got some blow-by gases from around the pistons that are just a fact of life for pretty much any internal combustion engine. And you kind of want to be extracting those from the crankcase so that you're not getting soot and whatnot settling in the oil. At least I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why they do it. So traditionally in a car, you'll have a valve like this one somewhere in the vicinity of the valve cover. And there will be vacuum being pulled on that by the intake that is extracting all those dirty gases out of the crankcase of the engine. And, and it's replacing those gases with fresh air from just behind the air filter using a breather, which provides metered air. It's a pretty decent system. It's worked pretty well for a lot of people, but sometimes you don't want those gases going right back into your intake. So they'll add a catch can between the intake and the valve cover and this PCV valve, which is an air oil separator. It swirls the air around and the droplets of oil collect on a sort of, usually a mesh or something in there and settle to the bottom where they can be emptied out. And the much cleaner air gets recycled back into the intake. BMW rather liked this second approach because they basically have a built-in catch can, but it doesn't require emptying. Crankcase gases from the valve cover come in and go into this little plastic sort of a cylinder and they swirl around and collect at the bottom but instead of just staying there they then get drained down into the oil dipstick tube right back into the oil sump so it kind of recycles the oil that way. Now there's a few downsides to this. First of all the system is prone to freezing up. There's actually a variation of it specifically for cold weather where the drain tube down to the oil dipstick is insulated so that it doesn't freeze up. Because when that happens, the system can no longer freely run and you can get excessive oil consumption. The other problem is when the one-way valves within it fail, it can actually pull a vacuum on the dipstick tube and start ingesting oil from the oil sump directly into the intake and hydro lock the engine. And of course, it's all made of plastic, it's all fairly brittle, and it all is very, very prone to vacuum leaks, which I think I might have some minor vacuum leaks but my smoke detector, I, I, I'm not getting any smoke out of them, so we'll see. So the idea here is to take the current BMW system and turn it more into a traditional PCV system, except with this mod, it doesn't replace the air that is being removed with fresh air quite as readily and results in quite a bit more uh, crankcase vacuum. The idea there, I believe, is on the M54B30, which has low tension oil compression rings, you want the vacuum underneath them to suck them against the cylinder walls a little harder to prevent blow-by and the oil consumption that these cars are known for. My car doesn't consume a ton of oil. It's about a quart every 1,500 to 1,800 miles, which is considered pretty good for one of these. Certainly a lot better than another car that has this issue, which is the Scion TC, like the first generation that I own. Those engines are prone to oil consumption in the range of a quart every tank of gas. And then they blow up because they run out of oil, and that's why used engines for those cars are $3,000. Don't buy one. This has been Jake's consumer buying advice for the day. So since my CCV system needs done anyway and buying a whole new CCV system is a lot of money and this is about $30 all in and completely reversible, why not? Well, by reversible, I mean like if you're gonna buy a new CCV system, you can't really put the CCV system back to stock without buying new parts because you are ruining parts, but they would all need replaced anyway, so here we go. This mod actually comes from a thread on an E39 form, which is the 5 Series that came out alongside this. And uh, there were quite a few people in that thread that had been running this mod for quite some time and had very little oil consumption and a much smoother running engine. And it's uh, pretty simple what you need. I've got this Dorman, part number 02608. It is an expansion plug. I've got some good 3M black electrical tape. I've got my MicroGuard PCV valve. This is part number 
Uh, PCV178, uh, it's a replacement for a Fram FV178. And you want this one specifically, not only due to the dimensions, but due to the measured amount of air that can go through there. Uh, it keeps the car from, there's a fine balance between consuming too much oil and, and not consuming enough oil. And then we've got a couple of hoses here. What size are these? Yeah, just this hose. It's like a wrap album. I don't know what hose I have. Ah, here we go. It's a foot of three quarter inch ID hose and a foot of three eighths inch ID hose. And that fits on either side of the uh, PCV valve. Let's get into the car, start getting access to things and get a move on. There's not an excessive amount of stuff that needs to come out of the way here. We're going to take off my strut tower brace, um, this, which isn't screwed down on my car. I, I never have found hardware for that. And then we're just going to take out the uh, air filter tray as well, because we're trying to get access to under here. This is one of the hoses we'll be dealing with, uh, as well as this thing here, which is the vacuum distribution manifold. I kind of just made that name up, but it makes sense because that's what it does. Now we're actually gonna remove this air distribution manifold. Looks like there's just a few Torx screws. Now I'm just gonna use some uh, penetrating oil right here where these uh, go into the intake manifold. There's gonna be rubber O-rings in there and I'd like to not tear those. Okay, now we're just gonna... Ooh, I hate this. Ugh. Did it break? Okay, no, it just came free. Oh my gosh. This is horrible. <laughs> I, this is, uh, this is the worst. Uh, 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 come on. Oh, hey, there we go. All right. So, at this point, there is this here still attached. This goes down to the CCV system. We're gonna wanna remove it. And it looks like it is a pinch and pull type thing, but I think I'm gonna want more penetrating oil on that guy. It's gonna get all over my fingers. It's gonna be great. I'm so excited. This right here, you pinch like that and push this way, and then you hope it comes off. Hey, nice. At this point, what we have is just the, uh, uh, air manifold here and take a quick look at all these uh, o-rings make sure they look good these actually look great and it's still attached via this hose here which we're actually going to cut right about here ish dang i forgot to hit record but a uh, pocket knife worked great out this comes so now we want to remove some of this insulation so that we can actually connect one of our hoses that we bought to it so let's see Try to make this a real nice, even part line here. Fairly even, fairly nice. Definitely a part line. And what's gonna go on here is our smaller tube. Um, however, it, it doesn't quite fit perfectly which is what the electrical tape is for. And I know this looks jank, and that's because it is. A few turns around here to give this just a little bit more diameter. I think the engineers who made this had this in mind. I think they knew. Ow. Don't use a knife like I do. Use a knife like a sane person would. My hose. Oh, that's a nice tight fit now. And if we get it to butt right up against that, it looks pretty nice. And we're gonna follow that up with the thing that I forgot that we also need, just a, uh, an assortment of hose clamps. But yeah, if I just do that like that, yeah, it looks quite nice. You know, looks are important. You still gotta take pride in whatever the heck butchery you're doing to your BMW today. And people like to say about all kinds of modifications, they'll say, oh, what? 
you think you know better than the engineers? Not necessarily. But if engineers were able to design and build a car based entirely on their own specs, that car would cost $3 million. I mean, it would get, well, really, that car would be the Bugatti Veyron. <laughs> That's what happens when engineers build a car uh, without any bean counters telling them no. Um, but every car manufacturer has their own set of requirements and goals and things that they're targets that they're trying to hit, and those don't necessarily line up with what I want out of a car. So here we are. Uh, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little Dorman plug here. I'm gonna plug off this port where we removed earlier a piece. Uh, there's other plugs that people have used for this. I just, I, I like, I like this. I like this idea. It looks kind of nice. Sure. Next thing is going to be this pipe here coming into the valve cover. Same thing as the other one. Squeeze on this one. It's top and bottom and out, out it comes. And then we're going to cut it uh, wherever we can get to really. And at this point, you can kind of see why the CCV is so failure prone. That's some pretty thin plastic, though this does look like it's in decent shape. There's the old hose there. Uh, the insulation came off with it, but you can just leave that. You can also just leave these. So this is actually two hoses put together, and we're going to want to unput them together. So I'm just kind of going to do this number here, try and score this tube, and see if it'll just... There we go. Right off it comes. And I think you see where this is going. This is where uh, the big chungus tube goes. But you remember how we bought a foot of this? Yeah, we only need like this much. About like that, because this is going to attach to our microguard PCV valve. It's time for more worm gear clamps or jubilee clips or whatever you want to call them. I am orienting mine so that the actual screw part will be on the bottom because that looks better. Probably important to note at this point that if you live in a state that uh, has visual emissions inspections, uh, first off, I'm sorry. Second of off, uh, this probably, this mod isn't for you because I'm pretty sure this will fail a visual inspection by anyone who knows BMW stuff at all, and probably some that don't because it's kind of sketchy. I don't know. It's mostly hidden by the beauty cover, so maybe this won't get caught. Ah, I just stabbed myself with a screwdriver. That's not part of the steps. Don't do that. Okay, and then I'm going to need one more, but we'll get to that one. <gasps> okay, you should have this at this point. A nice PCV valve. At this point, we're good to put our air distribution manifold back in, but... First, I kind of cleaned up the, uh, I, I used some carb cleaner and uh, a rag and cleaned up each of these holes here. Uh, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, lube in each of these to help it all install nicely. And also make a really fun smoke show when we turn the car on. It's the little things. I think those are all installed. Definitely coming in on the home stretch here. Uh, so now we just have to attach these two bits here. So we're gonna do a cut. Put that there. Put that. Just like that. And give her a good CN2. That's not half bad. Let's put the top half of the car back together, and there's one thing we need to do from underneath. Let's play Spot the Difference. There it is. There's one more part to this that we still have to do, and for that, annoyingly, we have to jack the car up. Because if you'll remember, this system drains back into the dipstick tube, which is still there, and we need to cap off that dipstick tube piece. It would help if I had my mic on when I was recording. So I bought this uh, Dorman help set of uh, bypass caps and the one that I used was the half inch ID one. And it goes 
I, I came in through kind of the side here above the control arm there and I pushed the old uh, hose off with a flathead screwdriver and then just reached up with my hand and put on the new cap. So that's capped off. So now I can go ahead and give the car a start and see how it sounds. Okay, first start, here we go. Oh, that was a uh, very iffy start because of all the uh, stuff that was in the intake, lubricant and stuff. Uh, that's, right off the bat, probably the smoothest idle I've ever felt in this thing. I am kind of curious what the uh, crankcase vacuum is like. Uh, it's absurd. That is a lot of vacuum. So this is kind of an experiment. I'm not saying that you should do this on your car, because that much vacuum seems like it could have some potential side effects. But I'll run with it for a while, and we'll see how things go. That is so smoothly idling now, though. I mean, I could, I could, I could balance something on there. I don't really have anything to balance, but so I'm gonna give this a shot for a while, see how it does on the car, and I'll do a follow-up video later that'll encompass both this modification and the uh, oil sample that I sent out to Blackstone, and we'll kind of see what's going on. I'll also be able to update uh, with my oil consumption and how it's gone. So we'll give it a few thousand miles, a couple of weeks, and. We'll see what shakes loose. Thanks for watching.